Until the lion learns to tell his own story, the tail of the hunt would always glorify the hunter. That is why our story must be told. We have heard your story, his story, their story. It's time to tell our own story. And this is the lion's own story. The most authentic side of the story. This is the African history class. And my name, Black Rasta. Now today we're taking you all the way into the land of Cape Coast. That beautiful land that used to be the capital of the Gold Coast until it was moved to Accra. Oh, that beautiful stretch of land that is full of vegetation and full of positive energy where the Fanti people live. Now the Fantis live in so many different parts of Ghana. But if you want to see the true Fantis, the fantasies who have kept to their roots from the ancient of days up till now, you will never ever push away central region where we find the capital as Cape Coast, western region where the capital is Takraze. Find time and go to Sekundi Takraze, especially Sekune, where you will meet great fanti people who will tell you very wonderful histories of their lives, their past, their present, and their future. Today we are talking about one of the greatest fancy women who ever lived. Born in the 1800s, this great black woman changed the course of history for fancy land. Today we are talking about this great black woman who originally was born Efua Kesi. Efua Kesi. Now, Efua Kesi was born in the 1800s. In fact, circa 1800, she was born. Her mother was called Sarah Adezua. And she came all the way from Commander. Her father was simply called Dawson. And he came from Anomabo. Now, these are all places in the central region of Ghana. Today, at that time, her mother was a very powerful merchant. She was a trader who sold so many different things, from needles all the way down to blue. She even sold thread and sold corby and so many different things. It was said in those days there was nothing you would ask for from Sarah Adejua and you will not find she was such a powerful trader. People came from left, right, and center, from all walks of life, to buy things that she sold. She became so wealthy. She was said to be one of the wealthiest women who lived in Cape Coast. When she died, her daughter, Ifua Ketsi, took over the trade. And with her education and her association with the British, she was able to bring so much to bear in order to promote the business that her mother had bequeathed to her. Her business started to flourish. She broke new grounds for marketing and she got wealthier more than 100 times her mother. Today we are talking about Efua Ketsi. Efua Ketsi was christened Kate Dawson because she was Christian. Her mother, Sarah, was also Christian. Her father, Dawson, was also Christian. So her home name or her indigenous name or her traditional name was Efua Ketsi. But in church and in school, she was simply called K. 
Kate Dawson. Today we are telling you the story of this great black woman, Kate Dawson, and her life story is about to get taken. Now when she realized that her mother was involved in so many different businesses of buying and selling, she knew that she had to take the business to another level. She invested in real estates. She became the very first woman in Cape Coast and the whole of the Gold Coast to be involved in the real estate business. In fact, even in the 1970s, some of her properties, landed properties, were still standing in Cape Coast and even up to this date. Now, if you have been to Cape Coast before, you would have heard of the Fort Gate House. How about the Gothic House? Have you ever heard about the Dawson Hill? Of course, that was named after Kate Dawson's father, Mr. Dawson. Now, have you heard about the Swansea House? I'm going to be telling you about that house very, very soon. But in the interim, let's get deeper into the life of Kate Dawson. Remember, this is the African history class. Kate Dawson made so much money. She became the wealthiest woman in the whole of the Gold Coast. The British came to trade with her and she became so powerful that she called the shots when the British wanted to undertake any expedition. They would have to talk with her. And if she said no, most of the times the British would step back and you will soon get to know why she got so powerful and how she got powerful. Apart from the fact that she made so much money, she also owned a lot of landed property. She was extremely beautiful and quite well educated. Now see what happened now. There was a time that something interesting happened. And this happened in 1852. It was the poll tax ordinance. In 1852, there was the poll tax ordinance. The people of Cape Coast and the rest of the Gold Coast were supposed to pay a certain tax known as the poll tax. And this tax was very, very much fought against. But because of the power of the British, most of the indigents of the land were scared to talk. It took this great black woman, Kate Dawson, to write a letter in 1855 to Henry Connor. Henry Connor. Henry Connor was the governor of the Gold Coast at that time. And in 1855, K. Dawson wrote a letter telling the governor, listen, I am paying this tax, but this is a demonic tax. It is a tax that is not good for our people. It is a tax that is so terrible. It is a tax that will not help the already poor people of this wonderful land. But I'm paying it first and foremost to obey your laws. But I'm also registering the fact that I am against this. If you truly respect the people of this area, wipe out this tax. She wrote this letter to Henry Connor. Henry Connor received it in 1855. Two and a half years after the poll tax ordinance was initiated. Ah, interesting things happening. So, this tax was reviewed all because of this great black woman. Now see the next thing that happened. There was a company that came all the way from England. You know, the Fantis and the British had a certain romantic relationship. They went to war together. The Fantis always supported the British. In fact, in most of the wars, the British fought the Ashantis in the so-called Anglo-Ashanti Wars. The Fantis were always in support of the British. I'm going to tell you something which is about to blow your space. Hear me now. This company from England was called FNA. FNA Company. The F&A Swansea 
company and it came all the way from England. When it arrived, it was so attractive. People were interested in doing business with F&A, Swansea Company. And it was all because it was endorsed by Kate Dawson. When F&A Swansea Company came, it got in contact with uh, Kate Dawson, who was the kingpin of all indigenous businesses in the Gold Coast. They had picked up the intelligence that once you are in the Gold Coast, you must be talking to this woman called Kate Dawson. When you talk to this Kate Dawson and she endorses your business and starts doing business with you, all the other people in the locality would all do business with you. And it worked. F&A Swansea Company spoke with Kate Dawson. And when she teamed up in partnership with F&A Swansea Company, the business started to flourish. Oh my God. And the man who brought the company from England was called Henry Swansea. Henry Swansea. He saw the power of this great black woman and fell in love with her. They got married. So he was British and she was indigenous Fante. They got married. Their relationship became stronger, especially when they ventured into other businesses. So I told you that I was going to tell you the secret behind that area known as the Swansea House right there in Cape Coast, that beautiful house. It was because of the relationship between Kate Dawson and F and A Swansea Company and the marriage that happened between Kate and Henry. That was why the Swansea House came into being and is in Anomabo. Anomabo is just a few miles away from Cape Coast. They built that beautiful Swansea House there. And any time you have time and you travel to Anumabo, ask to find where Swansea House is, right there in Anumabo. Now that we've come to know exactly who Kate Dawson was, her riches, her wealth, and her power of communication, and the power that she wielded, we have to take the story to another level. And this is the level I want us to look at. Hear me now. There was a governor of the Gold Coast, simply known as Commander Hill. But his full name was Commander Stephen John Hill. Commander Stephen John Hill. But in the Gold Coast, they simply called him Commander Hill. Very powerful and well-known commander. And he became the governor of the Gold Coast right from 1851 all the way down to 1857. A powerful man. And whilst he was here, oh, he came in contact with the Ashantis. There were wars that happened between the British and the Ashantis. But the Ashantis were so powerful. They would come with so many different people. Very energetic and very powerful. Commander Hill realized that he had to go to Nigeria and go to the northern parts of the Gold Coast and bring people from Mali, bring people from Burkina Faso, bring people from Nigeria and some other places as soldiers to fight the Asantes. He did. And when they won the wars, they didn't want to go back to Nigeria and those other places. They had to be relocated right there in Cape Coast. But they needed land. Who was going to provide this land? Kate Dawson. She gave them the whole of the Kotokuraba area. And all these soldiers who fought for the British stayed there. Today, when you go to Kotokuraba and see a lot of Nordness, a lot of people from Nigeria and some other parts of West Africa, you know that this is the history. The British used them as soldiers. And when the war was over, they had to be resettled. It was Kate Dawson who gave them land at Kotokuraba to resettle. Today, we also have the Kotokuraba market. That was where she did her business and made the business flourish so much. Reason we have the market there. That was where her own mother, Sarah Adezua, operated. And she herself inherited the place 
and went ahead buying so many different properties around Cape Coast and beyond. Today we are talking about Kate Dawson. We are moving into the third part of the story. Oh my God. And this is the part of the story that is most interesting. There was a king of the Ashanti land known as Nanakofi Kakari. Nanakofi Kakari was a monster. He loved gold just like King Midas. For him, it was all about gold. Now when you have time to read about Nanakofi Kakari, you realize that he had gold in the shape of the human head which was bought at 500 pounds by some British people some time ago. Today, we are not going to look at that. He had a high affinity for gold. He threatened the Fantis with war. And the Fantis realized that there was no way they were going to win a war against the Ashantis. Kofi Kakari wanted to fight. Kofi Kakari was so powerful and he wanted to fight. This was 1872. He started threatening. For a whole year, he was threatening. And remember, they had to move all the way from Kumasi down to Cape Coast to fight. Sometimes it would take a whole number of months to get there on foot. And whilst walking, they would be chanting and singing, ready for war. When the fantasies realized that they couldn't, it took one woman, Kate Dawson, to talk to the Asante Hene. You are strong. You know you can defeat us. And we know that you can defeat us. But war will not help us. What can we do to buy off this war? What? She showed money. Asante Hene said, give me gold. And Kate Dawson said, but you are the king of gold. All the gold comes from you. How do you come to a woman who sells only Kobe and sells needles and thread and be asking for gold? He said, I don't care. All I want is gold or else we will attack you and find the gold that you have. Hey. Kate Dawson said, wait. She went into Cape Coast and brought gold worth 486 British pounds. 486 British pounds, big amount of gold in one box and gave it to Nana Asantehine. When Asantehine saw it, he collapsed. He had never seen so much gold, especially from a woman at one sitting. She said, take, do you need anything more? Asantehine collapsed. He took a bribe from Kate Dawson. The Asante Hini who took a bribe so that the war would not be fought. And the people of Cape Coast decided to nickname our heroine for today, Kate Dawson, a boom. And a boom simply means the breaker of the might of the Ashanti. The breaker of the might of the Ashanti. She bribed the Ashanti king and silenced the Ashanti king who collapsed out of all. All because of so much gold she had seen from this great black woman. And for that, she earned the nickname Ebum. Listen to what happened. After he took the gold, he became greedy. Greedy, greedy. He came again the following year and threatened. We are coming for war. We shall fight you. And interestingly, at this time, the British had a very powerful soldier. His name was Sir Garnet Walsley. Sir Garnet Walsley. Interesting and powerful soldier. He had been unleashed onto the Gold Coast by the British to come and help the Fantis, fight the Asantis, and protect the Fantis as well, who had become an ally of the British. So when Asantihini Nanakufi Kakari, came again and wanted more gold. This time round, Kate Dawson said, and draw, and to send it. Mm, and do that, until then though. Me say, and do that, until then day. So she say, who say, and draw, and to send it. Yesterday, is not today. Okay, 
we are coming to fight you. This brought about the war known as the Sagranti War. Sagranti War. Why was it called Sagranti War? You want to know? Remember, this is the African history class. This is where the lion roars. This is the most authentic African history. Please make sure that you visit our YouTube channel. It's called the African History Class. African is spelled A F R W E K A N. Class is K L A W S. Subscribe to our channel and then you click on the notification button so that every time we unleash such wonderful stories, you are able to pick up that. Be the first to know. Today we are talking about Kate Dawson. She became known as Kate Swansea after she got married to Henry Swansea of F&A Swansea Company from England. Sagranti War. That was the war. Why was it called Sagranti War? It was all because of the British soldier by name, Sir Garnet Worsley. The Asantis could not pronounce Sir Garnet Worsley. So they simply said, Sagranti. 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 Sir Garnet Walsley. Sagranti. So it became known in history as Sir Granty War. Sagranti War. Sagranti War. Sir Garnet Walsley. Sagranti War. Now the British and the Fantis came together and Kate Dawson spent money. She showed wealth. She pushed money. And got other people, including women. She sat with seven other women to plan the whole Sagranti war. And Sir Garnet Wesley was shocked at the way she planned the war. He just led the war. And that was when he went into Kumasi and set the whole place on fire. Sagranti war. The Asantis were defeated in no time. And Kedosin said, Ncheyuhu. Ncheyuhu. Messi. And then out there and they Kate Dawson will go down in history as the great black woman who stood for the wonderful Fante land, who spent money to bring peace to her people, who spent money to also get aggressive in order to bring peace. They say when you are for peace, you must prepare for war. The Sagranti War was fought in March 1874. In fact, the 14th day of March, 1874. And when the Asantis were defeated by October, Nana Kofi Kakari was forced to abdicate. They chased him out. They said, it's because of your greed. You were worrying these people. And you knew that you didn't have the strength to go fight them. You got the gold as bribe. You wanted more. Now see where you have put us. 14th March. 1874, the Sagranti War. And in October 1874, Nana Kofi Kakari was forced to abdicate and he ran away, never returned. He died a shocking death, oh, of melancholy. Today we remember this great black woman, Mami, Mami Kate, oh, Mami Ifuakese. Mami Ifuaketsi Uni Yaminko Ata Miss Uni Yaminko Nayebi Essi ended up until the end. Essi yesterday cannot be today. Oh, Mami, Miss Ayebi, Ayebi. Mami, Mami. We do not know when she specifically died, but we do know that she lived long enough. To have children and grandchildren and even great grandchildren. Today we remember this great black woman born in the 1800s. Oh, this great black woman, originally born in Fua Kesi. E Fua Kesi. She became Kate Dawson and then she became Kate Swansea. Oh, Mame. Mame. Mrs. Damir Fadriata. Damir Fadriata. Dread, 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 dread,
ma mi se mi nubo ko mi nubo ko ata famko 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 mi se famko ma mi famko uni ya mi ko ata oh uni ya mi ko uni ya mi ko uni ya mi ko uni ya mi ko it's been the African History Class and my name Black Rasta now in the burden of knowledge how would the life of Kate Dawson the life of Efua Kese the life of Kate Swansea impact your own lives in contemporary times in the burden of knowledge I ask you now that you know what we do do be an any or lay a mini over fee you zoom the kagane me zaka yini yeah i pa bangu buka yenda fifi a yinya no kaina wo ba na yehu ebe den lele ya jima singa be kone lele ya jima singa beri ow it's been the african history class and my name black rasta Ila ila chinde la lenyo, ila amu ama tinda bato mu, tinda bi tete tete kaba wela ne, Jesus bi ngwe ngwe ne kaba wela no.